It's time for the Daily Stand-Up Podcast presented by Agile Dad with your host, Lee Henson. Without any further ado, let's get started. I thought it was interesting that someone actually sent in a, a request for me to talk about an article that was published for a Friday episode. Uh, this is the first time that's ever happened in the history of the podcast. The article that they wanted me to talk about is eight uncomfortable truths about life that will wake you up. And at first I was like, oh, this is going to be a Debbie Downer Friday episode. But when I thought, started thinking about it, many of us live in a fantasy life. We, we live vicariously through the life of others, whether it's through social media or whatnot. And I think that we all have problems and that problems are pretty universal. It, it's just sometimes the problems are unique, but other times it's just we have to deal with uncomfortable truths. So I thought it'd be fun to cover. <laughs> I'm reading from the article. I don't think it's fun to cover a list of uncomfortable truths uh, from a book that was published called The Orange Book. So here we go. The first truth, starting at number one, and there's eight of them, the people you attract or don't attract reflects your vibes. If you're surrounded by certain types of people, that's the vibe that you give. If you take a chance to audit your inner circle, you're going to find that the people in your life are there because of how you behave and the way that you think. If there are some people there that you think don't belong, maybe there's something in your life that needs to have an adjustment. The vibe that you put out is crucial. Uh, every conversation with you starts with you attacking other people or pointing out problems in the world, then it's likely going to surround yourself with people who do the same. You want to make sure that positive attracts positive and negative and negative uh, people attract negative. So you want to take the time to make sure you're taking, taking an opportunity to attract positive people and repelling the negative. Okay, let's go to number two. No one cares about your opinion until you show proven results. <laughs> wow. Everybody has an opinion, right? And many people seek to, I almost used a quote there that was bad, but many people seek to be thought leaders or build an online audience. And, and that's fine. But in the beginning, nobody really cares. It took me so long to prove to people that through this podcast and through other means that I kind of know what I'm talking about and I have some credibility. We pay attention to people who have results, get results, and not the loud voices that's achieved nothing. I mean, if you want to listen to that, just watch CNN. Uh, <laughs> that was a joke. But time in the game beats time commenting on the game. There's nothing wor worse than a backseat driver, right, or an armchair quarterback. Get in there and make a difference. Then you can talk about it. All right, next. It's not lack of talent. It's fear of making sacrifices. This one's one of my favorite ones. There are so many excuses for why people don't exceed, but talent has nothing to do with it. What you achieve in life is in direct proportion to how many sacrifices you're willing to make. If you're willing to make a sacrifice, big goals start out with sacrifices. If you make the sacrifice for long enough, the results will lower the number of sacrifices you need to make in the future. So I said this a long time ago that we have a checking account. And that when we deposit sacrifices, that we have a, a number, and nobody knows what their number is, but we have a number of sacrifices we have to make in our life. And when we deposit those sacrifices, we can watch that number diminish. It's like paying off a mortgage. But you want to get to the point where you're in Dave Ramsey land, where you can scream, we're debt free. That's where you need to be, right? Better than I deserve. That's where we need to be. And I think that if we follow that plan, that that's going to help us as we cash in those sacrifices to recognize the reward. It's, it's the role of karma, right? All right, next one. You truly appreciate life only after you almost die. Now, I can tell you right now, this is true. Uh, for those of you who've never listened to the episode, I know I told an episode a while back about the day I nearly lost my best friend when I was drowning in his pool at a pool party and yeah, the family pretty much shunned me from that point forward from ever hanging out with their child again because I was young at the time. But, but it's one of those things where 
when you are seconds away, when you're fighting for that, when you're when you want something in life as bad as you want air when you're drowning, that is when you realize how valuable life is. That's when you appreciate it. And I think that it's unfortunate that it has to come to that point. But there's so many people out there who aren't there yet. They don't understand what life's about and they don't appreciate the gift that life's gives that life is giving them because they don't know what it's like to be without it. Okay. Next one directly ties to this one. You don't know how important something is until you lose it. For a long time, I took things for granted. Earlier in my life, I met someone who I thought was going to be the one. She was absolutely perfect in every way to me. And then I did something abusive. I did something stupid. I said things that I never should have said. I was never physically abusive, but I said things that I never should have said. And I'll never forget the night when she told me, quote, just hold me. She goes, because this is the last night ever that you'll have an opportunity to do that. And ouch, right? I thought that, that there's no way this could be true. We, we, we spent years in a relationship together, but it did all end on that night. And I never got the opportunity to tell her how much I appreciated who she was, how intelligent she was, how loving she was, how amazing she was. I never got the chance to say that. And to think that she would never, ever take a call from me again, never answer a social media post. It was just shocking. She, she literally disappeared out of my life, never to come back again. I hope and pray many times to have an opportunity to run into her, not so I can scramble back to her, but just so I can say thank you for being a person that she was. Because that's the least that she deserves, right? Okay. Next one. Most people don't know you exist and don't really care about you. It's so funny because social media is a plague. It teaches us that we all need to have this undying attention, right? Now, I have thousands, tens of thousands of people who follow me on social media and follow me in some formats. I've had opportunities to speak at conferences in front of 20, 30,000 people. I, I I know a lot of people, right? And, and I appreciate the fact that I know a lot of people. But when you compare that to the billions of people that exist, I, I'm a drop in a bucket and people really don't care. It, it's, if you wake up every day thinking of just you, you're going to lose a lot of value in your life. You need to wake up thinking about other people and how you can uplift them. And that's why this podcast, for example, is a labor of love. I want to uplift other people. I want to help other people be successful. And I don't care whether they care about me or not. It was Richard Branson who I heard say, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So, so most people just don't even know you exist and you have to live with that. All right, next one. It doesn't matter how much you learn in your life, you'll never feel ready. Oh my goodness, this is a good one. Yeah, so for me, I know a lot about a lot of topics, but I don't know everything about any topic. And I still get butterflies when I go into a room and I have to teach or present or answer questions or be on the fly. And I think that every kid in the world is evidence of this, right? They learn as much as they can, whether it's through school, through friends, through higher education, through other relatives, through experience. But no matter how much you've experienced, it still doesn't prepare you for the reality of life. And it doesn't make you ready for all the things that you're going to face. Uh, you need to get to the point where you are listening to your inner soul teach you about your outer soul. You need to get inspiration and experiment with trial and error. Uh, get away from generic learning experiences and figure out a customized path to who you are in discovery so that you can uh, really dig in and figure out what it is that makes you tick. All right. And the last one, this is the most sad one. Every single person you love will die or you die first. Wow, this last truth just made me feel emotional when I read it. I have had many people close to me die. Sometimes it's not physical death. Sometimes it's just emotional or spiritual death. Or they succumb to addiction. Or they succumb to something that's worse than they are. And I can tell you, 
I've had times in my own life where I said, oh, I ought to call this person. Maybe I'll call next week. Or I want to say something to this person, but maybe I'll say it next time. And there never was a next time. So I guess my advice to you is take this as an opportunity to connect with your personal feelings and to connect with other people. Because if you do, it's going to make you a stronger, better person. And it's going to help you understand these truths. So while while this list was surprisingly better than I thought it was going to be, I think that if you think about these truths and wake up and live each day to its fullest, it's going to help you recognize your full potential and help you get to the point where you can uplift others. Because the truth is, if you focus all your life on yourself, you're never going to make the progress that you want. It's not until you lose yourself in the service of others that you discover who you really are. I hope you have an amazing weekend, and I look forward to talking to you next week. Until then, stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care. 